the part of an argument that leads to a conclusion is the premise. And sometimes a conclusion is supported by many premises put together. Some premises are not explicitly stated. You might call those an implicit assumption or a number of other things. Duke should be punished! Mm, can you tell me why? Anybody who hits animals needs to be, should be, punished! Let's slow things down and figure out what's really going on in this angry person's head. It turns out it's a modus ponens with one of the premises missing. If P then Q, P therefore Q. Turns out that they're thinking that whoever hits animals should be punished. They're also thinking that Duke hits animals, and they're drawing from those two premises the conclusion that Duke should be punished. Of course, they're storming into the room and just exclaiming the conclusion that Duke should be punished, which is the conclusion of a really nice, easy argument. But then when you ask for information explaining why they should be punished, they give you one of the premises, not both of the premises. And you might infer, you might add the missing premise that they think Duke hits animals. That would explain why they think Duke should be punished. So what we have here is the conclusion and then one premise. Saying that Duke should be punished because whoever hits animals should be punished is the same thing as saying Q because if P then Q. In both instances, you've left out what appears to be the second premise in the argument. Now, you could read it, this argument, you could read it this way. If P, then Q, if you hit animals, you should be punished. And Duke is someone who hits animals, so Duke should be punished. But it also is a valid argument to say Q because of P, then Q. The missing assumption is that P. It's hidden, it's tacit, it's implicit, it's a secret that you could uncover. Let's say that we had the argument that Duke should be punished because whoever hits animals should be punished. You could fill in the missing premise. You could deduce that the person speaking thinks Duke hits animals by making the inference, by filling in the missing information. Let's have another example. Seeing that there's a 90% chance of rain and then deciding to take an umbrella is doing an argument inside of your head where the conclusion is an action. The conclusion is take an umbrella. So here is the argument. It's another modus ponens. If it's going to rain, you should take an umbrella. It is going to rain, so you should take an umbrella. So let's say you decide that the chance of rain today is so high that you have to take an umbrella. It's not worth the risk not to and you take an umbrella. You leave your house, you're locking the door, and you hear next door a mom shouting at the kid about to leave the house. Take an umbrella, it's gonna rain! The mom is offering an argument. She gave a conclusion and she gave a reason to support that conclusion. Conclusion, take an umbrella. Reason, it's going to rain. The premise, it's going to rain, supports the conclusion, take an umbrella. But the argument, to be a perfect modus ponens, is missing a premise. It has an implicit assumption. And to fill this in, we need the first one. She just said it's going to rain, so take an umbrella. What she was really thinking was, if it rains, you should take an umbrella. It's going to rain, you should take an umbrella. So her implicit assumption, or a hidden premise, or the implicit reasoning in what she said was that you should take an umbrella if it's going to rain. In other words, if it's going to rain, you should take an umbrella.